Final episode, finals day for Darwin Brass Band. Nervous, but I feel good. I think, uh, I think we're in with a good chance. Just getting a bit nervous there. Yeah. Excited. That's a better word to use. The adrenaline's flowing now, that's all. The adrenaline's begin to build up. Once you've made a mistake or whatever, then that, that sticks. Keep a fingers crossed and hope everything goes OK on there. Gordon Clough and the band, success in this competition is far from certain. It's a tricky piece containing many pitfalls. In fact, it's not dissimilar to this series. Was Vox Pop successful in projecting the voice of the people? I hope that there will be more series um, of Vox Pop in different parts of the country. It would be very interesting to see other people's views. I think that perhaps the producer should try to be a little bit more um, subjective and stand back slightly and let the people's views come across um, in a more balanced way so that they don't um, cut up the program or edit it to get their own point of view across um, and that the, let the people speak for themselves. The biggest crime as far as educational standards goes that happened in this country was the abolition of direct grant schools. The more, more happy you can make children about dealing with money and knowing what you can buy and knowing what you can get for, for the pocket money you have, whatever, will, will pay off in the future. I think children are, tend to think in the present rather than the future. God help us if, if uh, we get a, a new breed of super children um, brought up on the, their idea of what a good moral base is. Um, originality would uh, be out of the window and they would have a, just a, a little race of nice, neat, middle-class conservative robots. Our points were put across to counter someone else's points uh, in the previous little sequence. And instead of being perhaps put as a, a more positive point of view, they were just simply used as a sort of... Um, you know, negative effect to counter a more extreme view. I accept that the, uh, the reason for this may be that, that our views are not good at television. I hope they, think that they don't think that we're all like uh, the cross-section that's been represented because it, it has shown us up as a bunch of extremists. I am suspicious that uh, some of this will have been done in the final cutting and editing um, for uh, a distinct uh, purpose and perhaps has been tongue-in-cheek to some extent. In other words, that the extremists have been given a lot of rope to hang themselves and to parade themselves for ridicule. I mean, take that warring 40s thing that was on the other week. I mean, do people think really that the whole of Darwin would have got in there if they could? It was tragic. In another way, it was pathetic. The spectacle of it was quite appalling to me. Yeah. by the effervescent Audrey, tonight's Warring Forties is to be an evening of tasteful nostalgia and a deep dig into the pocket for the who knows when general election fighting fund. I certainly hope that Maggie Thatcher won't take the somewhat right-wing bias that the programmes have tended to present as being a cross-section of the, the whole of the country or she could be very, very disappointed at the next election. <laughs> There was no need for that, really. You know, we just uh, we just had a war a couple of months ago, so you know, it's no no need to remind wars all the time. There was no need to include that party. Well, the only thing surprised me, I think, Conservative Party people. They they claim that they are the only people uh, who are the um, genuine uh, uh, you know people to fly that flag. I can fly that flag. I live in Britain and. I can say that Union Jack, you know, is, is our flag, because I'm a part of this country now. Integration isn't easy, and is complicated by Ashfaq's candor on Vox Pop. But when they all get together at one place, 
and say if any Englishman go through that place, and I know they all call a particular place in Blackburn Khyber Pass, and I don't blame them because it is like a Khyber Pass. You'll hardly see any white people in that area. Some friends of mine, you know, they says, you know, well, whatever you're doing, you're trying to bring uh, all Blackburn people, Blackburn people in Darwin, and we don't want them here. We're trying to get rid of you lot, never mind bringing them in down. But I'll try my best, you know, to get into this society, to mix up with the local people. And after doing all that, when somebody say that, you know, so it does hurt. I got some criticism as well, you know, from our own people. And they say, you shouldn't have been saying things about us. You're a sort of representative for Pakistani. But I don't consider myself as a representative. I'm just an ordinary citizen. Vox Pop enjoyed a close relationship with its contributors, something not always available to the media. Hi, I'm from a programme called Did You See on BBC television, and uh, we're asking people questions about what they feel about the programme Vox Pop. Hey, Abraham. Hey, it's good. Hello, good. Hey? What are you doing? Well, well, we're we're now, what are you seeing now? It's not, it's not, not true. We come here, Tower. There's some beautiful parts in Darwin and you haven't shown them. You've shown all the rough parts and you haven't shown the nice buildings. What do you think? I like it because it tells the truth about Darwin. Thank you. Right. That's great. Thank you. Thank you very much right. indeed. I'll be watching. Hello. When she told us the same. What do you like about it? And his daughter likes it. She likes that man with a moustache. And he does all the talk. Do you think doing a similar series would be a good idea somewhere else? Yeah, it could be, yeah. yeah. Sure. Thanks very much. Sorry. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, it's a... Uh, it depends on some of the programme, isn't it? Hi, I'm from BBC Television, from a programme called Did You See? Put your arm around, Jack. Put your arm around the missus. <laughs> OK, folks, here we go. Martin. So, you've had many weeks of it. Has it changed you in any way? And when you see yourself on the television, is it the image you had of yourself to start with? No, it isn't. Not when you see yourself on telly. I didn't think it were possible, but you don't think it's you, really. Why? Well, your voice doesn't. You wouldn't think it were your own voice. How did you think your vo voice sounded? Like a dare in there. Pardon? Like a dare in there. Oh, right. But it didn't sound the way where it sounded on television? No, I don't think so. What, no. what is a Darren? A bloke came from the sun, I believe it was, and uh, he wanted to take me photo. And because I said I was like the secretary of a working man's club, the bloody trippet says, have you got a flat cap to wear? Meaning everybody that up north goes in a bloody working men's club must wear a bloody flat cap or something. He'd have looked well if I had a relatively top of that, wouldn't he? <laughs> Our Martin no way was going to appear on a photograph unless he got paid. Now then, he did have his photograph taken and he did get paid. But I don't tell you how much he got. It were a lot. Oh, it were a lot. But I never got out. Never got to the Jack didn't get paid but he was immortalised in song. Now Starlin shows a lad called Jack and he thinks he's very tall. I had a word with his wife last night and she said he's rather small. He says he keeps his wife to cuckoo with a chin and a peg. But when she found out what he said, she went and broke his leg. There's no like Ridley Ford. There's no like Ridley Ford. Well, there's some with brass and there's some that's broke. But there's no like Ridley Ford. I would think the chances of a working chap getting a chance to appear on a television programme is... Uh, the odds are very high. And... Uh, I thought it'd be a nice experience. Them that's been on the programme, they've uh, said what they want to say. And, uh, I mean, there's two or three of them on there, I'd have punched them off myself. I think you found out 
Your enemies more than your friends in this program. Do it down and you've got to be careful what you're saying about politics in this town because it causes a lot of uh, enmity, really. If you open your mouth against the Tories, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a member of the Con Club, but uh, I don't think you've been biased against Labour, a Tory, or Liberal, or anything. I you always what? voted Conservative. Always. I've never voted Labour in my life to pick up. Always voted Conservative. What have you always voted then? I've always voted Conservative. <laughs> You know, a right, true conservative. Not concerned about your mother. You only go off what people say. You don't. No, if I we were going up and it was, what would head. you have said on this programme? I don't know what you vote. I have a good idea, but I don't know how you vote. You don't oh. buckle down all the time, Jack. Give or no, I'm not having this. No. If you want to be remembered off Vox Pop as the bloke that finished a series with a series of lies, well, that's quite all right, well, it's I mean. not lies, because I haven't voted for years, because I don't agree with their policies. But the, the times I have voted, I have voted conservative. But don't forget, I'm 48 year old, and I've only voted four times, at most it might not be four, but I've voted. I've never voted Labour, Jack, and that's true, is that? Never. And I wouldn't vote, I wouldn't go from now to Ted, if there are poll box there to put your vote in, I wouldn't vote, because they all are together there. I don't think today it matters where you put your ex, I don't think it matters one bit. You can go Conservative, Liberal, Labour, it doesn't matter who you vote for, the working man won't get anything. That's what I'm saying. The Institute for Fiscal Studies confirms Harvey's thoughts. For the poor, getting nothing is becoming the norm, both old and young. She, she left school at 16. She's had no job since. Jobs are impossible to get. She has £23 a week. She gives her mother £10. So she's £13. She doesn't smoke, as it happens. But she goes out, dances and, you know, uh, but... Uh, there seems no future for her. There's no hope of a job. She can get a job at £25 a week, one of these youth opportunities. But she's not going to go out to work, and I insisted on this, she's not going to go out to work for £2 extra a week. I don't believe in that. That's cheap labour. And I'm not having it. I've been a trade unionist all my life, and I'm not having cheap labour. You're going back to 1930-odd when you're talking about that. Give them some hope. Give them a chance of getting a job, getting to work, and be independent and, and dignity. There's no dignity in signing on the door. Absolutely not. I think there's enough money in the country to uh, cut down on taxes, give the working man a better incentive to work, see to the old people, and generally create more wealth to them that's needy. And when they come to be 60, 65 or whatever, they're just relying on the old age pension. That and solely that. And how they manage, I do not know. I've seen old people look in shops in Darwin here, in cake shops and butchers, with long and eyes and thinking, how much can they afford to buy the cheapest cut of meat they can't afford the luxury of, it, say, a cake or something like that. And as regards holidays, they're simply out. I don't think anything profound has come out of it. I think it's just good.
good viewing for a certain type of people who that, like that type of viewing. We were reluctant to become involved originally. My views have been aired, some of them in all right, but I feel that some of them were a bit nonsensical because the it was taken, not necessarily out of context, because of the time factor, uh, I think people might get uh, a different view than I intended. In the first one, something that my husband said was, was taken out of context completely. And there was nothing to do with sacking. It was about the poverty trial. Could he have time off to go to the Social Security to draw some money? And he came back and he was objecting because the first thing they said, they gave him some money and said, where have you got your cigarette from? He said, uh, the foreman gave it me. But he came back and he was playing hell because he couldn't park his jag outside the social security office. And that's absolutely true. That, that was spoke, said to me. We got rid of him immediately. They know they've got the power that you think and you know in your own mind, if you go too far with that boss, he'll get rid of you. Seeing it for the first time, I wondered if this had been done deliberately. I think just by the, the people, the type of person they selected, you got left and right wing views and nothing very centre. In fact, one lady seemed very what? extreme communist. But there were others of whom the Smiths approved. I Scooby thought she was very, very, very good. good. Yes. She, she wasn't biased in any way, but she really talked sense. Yeah. I can't remember her name. If people are going to live on state benefits, they, sh they shouldn't be as well off. They should realise that the incentive in life is to go to work to earn the luxuries, not to sort of sit at home and expect the government to pay for them. She opened her mouth before she engaged her brain. Yeah. Yeah, because it's statements like that, you know, which can do a lot of harm. Yeah. And can get an awful lot of people's backs up. And this is a problem of being able to voice your opinion, whether it's actually uh, right or not. It's another thing, but everyone's entitled to their opinion, and that's why she said it. I don't think she's ever been on Social Security, so she doesn't know what it's like. Yeah. Going back a few years, everybody were working, and the other people on the door just didn't want to work. Now, if it was like this time now, if the programme was being filmed then, instead of now, I'd have agreed with her. Yeah. Because you could go from one job to another, but now you can't. No, and it's, it's a matter, you've got to be on the social now, you've got to be on the dole, because there is no bloody jobs anyway, because October we're back on the dole. I think I've been portrayed through the series very fairly. There have been quite a number of things that have been shown on the programme that I haven't liked about me, but I think they're me. I think the welfare state as a whole needs radical reform from every angle. I know there's been a lot of criticism about my remarks on the reorganisation of the welfare state, but again, I think people tend to take out of an episode what they want to criticise, um, as I do. People that are claiming benefits now have to go through some form of means test. I mean, it's, it's just a fact of life. If you're going to claim from the state, then the state has a right to know about your... People have said that it's, that it's been very biased. I don't agree. And I know that, you know, the producer has taken an awful lot of stick about this. I think that he's gone out of his way to get a fair amount of time for every side. Profit from offal, old bones, rancid lard and butter fat has fashioned the lifestyle for a once penniless self-made man, Alexander Smith. I was flabbergasted because I, I, we have never thought of ourselves as wealthy people in the way that he put it. And, and that was a shock to me. No, but the point is we are, really. Yes, <laughs> yes, but, yes, but, in a way, yes, but we haven't always been. I mean, we, we've been like all the rest of them. Well, is, uh, out of all the people on that programme of yours, there was nobody as poor as I was up to the age of 80, not one of them. We've also seen other people, are you talking about the, the Boneyard Man and, you know, like some of the young conservatives and uh, business type people in the town. It's given us a, an opportunity to, to, to find out what they really think about, about us. And really, it's not a lot, is it? <laughs> <laughs> they, don't, they, they think we're a load of bum scratching herbits, I'm sure they do. They're probably right, they probably do, but then again, we only think of them as uh, 
posh snobs that, you know. Got plenty of money. Yeah. Living mm. with other people's money, like that sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. Before we can win, we've got to lower our standard of living. And Germany had the answer between the wars. They, they realised they had to work for nothing to capture the markets. It's as simple as that. We've got to capture markets. The only thing we have to sell is our labour. Now, if nobody wants to buy our labour, we're knackered. We've nothing. I, I think the tele television crews have been excellent. I think the producers have been excellent having regard to what he wanted. But what he wanted, uh, I think most of the people on the programme would agree, was perhaps not what they would have wanted. Nobody's put words in our mouths at all. At least nobody's put words in my mouth. I think people have said what they wanted to say. Uh, but I also think it's been a very uh, conservative programme. It strengthened mine, my own beliefs, and my, you know, what I believe in. But I don't think it will affect anybody else's, what they thought. I think Jack Eccles has done marvellous. And I felt a lot of compassion for your, she called Miriam, the disabled lady. I, I felt a lot of compassion. And after seeing this week's program, uh, it, you know, it did choke me up a bit. I thought it was, she was seemed really genuine and uh, she was fighting for her kids all along the line. Um, I think I'm like the others though, about the young conservatives. Uh, their opinions are a bit, um, you will, they, you know, the people will do as we say and they should do this and they should do that. In the long term it will benefit everybody and anybody who is sh short-sighted enough to fail to see that should keep their mouth shut. Really. Their contribution is not worthy of listening to, to be honest. A magazine found Andrea, Florence and Marilyn worthy of listening to, but the journalist technique was not appreciated. There were some things, which, like, when we thought the interviews were over and things like this, we were just talking as as a friendly, you know, group. And there were one or two things when I turned around and said to her, I don't want that printing. And she's still gone ahead and printed it. And I certainly would think twice now about trusting the media uh, regards to, you know, these magazines and newspapers. When you get these arguments about the, the reporters twisting and then putting it out to context, we be I believe it now. I can, I can very well believe now you say don't, don't believe everything you see in the papers. It, it was just silly, just something to fill a page up. The editing of the film sometimes has given a wrong impression, just the same as a journalist can take something out of context, and, and that can be, a, can be quite disastrous for, for somebody who's made a statement. Sex crimes every night of the week in the press, and this is locally, this is in these small provincial town, but it's here. I was interviewed about my particular crusade against pornography. One was Playboy, one was, uh, I can't remember the names now, uh, but they, the only word I think one could say was, uh, you can talk about disgusting, deplorable, but, but it was horrific, it was horrific, it was absolutely the gutter of all gutters. And then the juxtaposition, as it were, of me watching a bathing beauty contest um, brought tremendous criticism from people who had supported me in my crusade, but thought that I had let the side down. She's a very nice looking yeah. girl as well. Ladies and gentlemen. I can see no connection between uh, a bathing beauty contest, a commercial bathing beauty contest and pornography, none whatsoever, but other people do. And it's something that I have to live with in this town forevermore. The Sunday Times gave me quite a, a write-up, and there were some, the, he told the truth. Uh, I probably do uh, come across in the archetypal type of whatever he said about me and so forth. Well, that's a fact. Uh, I accept that. It, it was fair comment. The middlest, middle-class man from an amateur production of Gilbert and Sullivan. Rotund, pullovered, pipe-smoking, dad figure, a shag at bay. When it comes to the situation, we're there. No, we're great because we have unity and because we believe in fair play. I think the BBC uh, um, uh, represented me fairly, mm. but I would like to have said more. I find that I look far more confident than I thought I would. True blue conservative opinion must sound very harsh indeed. Even sometimes when I'm hearing you speak, I think that does sound uncharitable. 
And in fact, I come over as being a little bit too confident, I think, as you would say. Anyway. This would be an argument for introducing some kind of incentives to keep people away from the doctors. While husband Bill is flat hunting in Mallorca, Millie frets about her impending heart operation. But I had a letter on Friday, cancelling this appointment as unto unforeseen circumstances, they'd have to give me another date. If we could have the incentives, if we could keep uh, the people away from the doctors who don't need to go, the wise brigade. I hope it's not another six months waiting again to see him, but if it is, well, it's just one of those things, isn't it? I'll just have to wait. If you make a small profit, then that really should go back into the business, shouldn't it? Rather than distributed out amongst the workforce who are well paid now i think they're quite well paid aren't they people in industry manufacturers don't want to take on new employees keep the head count down they say take on robots whatever and this is sad it's immoral but it's necessary and i can see the point because people employees are problem now i'm always very suspicious of people who to me take a line that looks like it's coming out a little bit fascist now, for instance, we had, uh, we had uh, Hurst the other night, the Wardley's director, saying that what he, he wanted in business was a business over which he had complete control. Nobody else had anything to say about it. He had complete control. Well, I took it from that, that he was looking at the situation. He got the right to hire and fire and, and do just exactly as he liked. Also said he didn't want any trade union involvement in any business he was in. Now, to me... A man like that, I don't know whether he's a member of the, uh, of the Conservative Party, but if he is a member of the Conservative Party, he's in the wrong one. I suppose I, I am right of centre. Uh, I might go onto the wing occasionally, but very rarely, and I think probably on occasions a little further, trying to hold the balance. In, in general, somebody's got to hold this balance. What was your reaction to all the characters? These people are the public. Um, the, and they are terribly bigoted, terribly prejudiced still. Uh, they, uh, they are terribly, uh, well, I'm a fo fo unfortunately the word is ignorant politically and uh, worldly. And uh, the terrifying thing is that they all have a vote. Let's start with, um, with you, Mr. Hurst. Yeah. If you'd like to tell me basically what you feel about the Vox Pop series. <coughs> yes, right. How are we on? Hmm. And if you'd like to, to tell me the answer. Mm. All right. I'll tell you the answer. Mm. Vox Pop. I think there is a wonderful market for Vox Pop. As Jim warms to his newfound celebrity, this series ends. But it's not quite over for the Darwin Band. Is it to be a fairy tale ending? second section of championships today to the band awarded 194 points they in fact played number 11 Darwin This theme music from the series is available on a BBC record.